Hey everyone, Bevo Devo here, and I'm wearing a nice shirt because we are getting serious today. Yes, we're finally talking about that elf in the room. No, not you. You. Yes, that's right. I have our flight plans and ILS landings. And let's start by talking about IFR. IFR stands for I'm Flying Realistically. It's a term that hardcore flight sim players use to tell other gamers that they are true legends who use nothing but raw brain power to take off, fly, and land their aircraft. Just kidding, IFR actually stands for Instrument Flight Rules, which are a set of regulations and procedures that allow pilots to fly in low to no visibility flight conditions. To put it simply, IFR flight plans let pilots fly blind. This is possible through the use of instruments in the cockpit, waypoints on the ground, and the guidance of air traffic control. In essence, when you make an IFR flight plan, there will be a series of waypoints leading to your destination. It will not always be a direct path, and your job as the pilot is to navigate to each of those waypoints. While doing this, air traffic control will tell you when to climb and to descend, which you need to listen to, otherwise they'll start yelling at you, which is pretty dang annoying. Now air traffic control will also inform you of any traffic in the area, and can pretty much change your flight plan at their discretion. An easier way of putting it is the sky is like a highway under an IFR flight plan. With each waypoint being an exit onto a new highway, and air traffic control being your Google Maps who won't shut up about rerouting your traffic up ahead. With that out of the way, let's get in game and I'll show you how to set up and fly an IFR flight plan. And don't worry, we're going to get to ILS landings. Alright, so now we're in game and let me show you how to set up an IFR flight plan from the world map, which is the first place we're going to go to. You're going to choose a departure and an arrival. In this case, I'm going to use KFlow and then KCAE. I'm going to use the Cessna Citation because, well, it's my favorite jet to use and it's quick and fun and easy. So there you go. Now, if we look right under our plane, we see VFR Direct GPS. Now, if we click this down, we get a couple of options. We can do VOR to VOR or IFR, and there are two options, low altitude airways and high altitude airways. Since this is a short flight, I'm just going to do low altitude. You can do high altitude for longer range flights, and if you just don't generally care to see what's on the ground from close up, uh, that works too just fine. It's just going to be a higher cruising altitude. And for the low altitude, it's probably going to be about 6,000 or something like that. So we go ahead and click that. We see it's still a nine minute flight, but now we have all these little markers here. And these are the waypoints that I was talking about earlier. So we have Lards, Sheba, all that kind of stuff. And these will basically guide you uh, to the airport. Now additionally in the screen we can choose where we want to start. We're just going to start from runway 27 because I don't want a taxi or anything like that. Uh, for departures we just get direct out since this is exactly where we're going, which is nice. Arrivals we're also going to keep direct. Now the approach. I'm going to go ahead and change that for the ILS part of this video and I will explain that later. But in the meantime I'll just pick something and we'll go ahead and go. So let's get on the ground. Alright so as is tradition we are on the ground and we're going to go ahead and set up our autopilot stuff in the same way that we did in the how to use autopilot in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 tutorial. However I will discuss other features of autopilot that I did not discuss previously. Big change, I know. Crazy. Wow. Yes. So first I'm going to do the usual and select the altitude. I think it's going to be about 6,000. Uh, I'm not really certain because ATC didn't tell me from the start, but he'll tell me when I take off and start yelling at me about frequency change. Alright, now that that's set, usually what I do is go ahead and turn on the heading mode. But I'm not going to this time. Instead, we're going to use the nav mode. So what nav mode will do is completely replace the heading function and follow our magenta line and go towards each waypoint as we have it set in our preloaded flight plan. So if we go ahead and zoom out our map here and look at our navigation display, we can see that we're going to go to Lards, Sheba, Chart, and then we'll hit the D cell and everything else. And so whenever we get up in the air and we turn on autopilot and turn on nav mode, nav mode will automatically take us to Lards, then Sheba, then Chart, and all of that. Now another pro tip, and this is specific to the citation, but you can do this in different ways in each aircraft, but just to kind of help you if you want to use this one, one of the handy bits of information we can get for a flight plan on the navigation screens are our constraints, which basically tell us what altitudes we need to be at based on the flight plan. Now in order to do this on the uh, Cessna uh, citation, what you can do here is click lower menu, and then you want to scroll on this lower knob and go down to map symbols, and then you can select constraints and then we can see 
uh, what altitudes we need to be at throughout this whole thing. And then you just hit escape, close all of that, and you're good. So let's get up in the air. Now that we have our constraints, we can see where we need to be. It'd help if I plugged in my controller before doing this, huh? All right, so we are now wheels off the ground. We go wheels up. And what we can do is turn on our autopilot, turn on nav mode. Did I actually turn on nav mode? No, I didn't. Turn it on, and then vertical speed, get yelled at, and adjust our vertical speed. That way we don't overspeed, because we're probably going to. Okay, so I was correct in that we needed to get to 6,000 feet, which is great. Now, if we go ahead and zoom in our map here, uh, by just clicking this, we can zoom in, we can see that our by throwing on nav, we do not have heading on. We can see that heading is not on up here. Uh, that we are heading direct towards Lards, and once we hit that, we should turn to the left and start moving towards KCAE. Now, we're not too very far into the flight, and this is pretty much the important part for IFR. Uh, in terms of now that we have our nav set, I mean, we're pretty much just heading there. Now, you can take off the nav and put on heading select if you wanted to. That's perfectly fine, perfectly acceptable. That just means you need to adjust the heading every now and again to make sure you stay on your course. And that's fine, I like flying that way sometimes. Uh, but for the purpose of this, I threw on nav mode just so I could say, hey, here's what nav mode does, and not have to worry about it. Now, you may not have heard because I always yell at ATC when they yell at me, but whenever I did take off and I contacted Florence Departure, which was the airport I left, um, I said that I was at 1,500 feet climbing to 6,000. Because I didn't taxi out and request clearance for takeoff or, you know, approval of my flight plan, they didn't tell me where I needed to climb to, so that was a good way for me to find out. So if you start on the runway, that's generally how. You just wait for you to tell yourself what altitude you're climbing to. So we're getting up to 6,000. We're going to level off uh, in just a bit here. Their altitude mode hold on, and then nav is going to do the rest of the work. So... In terms of IFR, like I said, that's about it. It's pretty simple. You just got to make sure you set that flight plan in the right way, and then you're good to go. Now, if we'd done high-altitude airways, it would have been different in that we would have had to climb more. And usually for high altitude, they'll have you climb to, I don't know, if your cruising altitude is 41,000 feet or flight level 410, uh, then they would probably have you do that climb in segments. So go up to 12,000, then flight level 200, and then up and up. So now that we're leveled out at about 6,000 feet, we can go ahead and look at our uh, nav map here. We can see we've gone through Lards already and Sheba, and we are headed towards Chart. Now the constraints for the climb on this are a little different than where we're at, and that's perfectly okay. Um, we may have climbed a little early, but it's, I mean, it's a short flight. It's not going to take very long, so it's no big deal as long as you get to where you're going. And I just noticed my flaps have been up this entire time. That is an amateur move, but I always forget they're down when we take off. Who can relate, am I right? Over speed. Over speed. And of course, as soon as I take off the flaps, <laughs> we fly into overspeed. Any hoozle, back to the point of what I'm saying here. Now, as you can see, that's pretty much the bulk of what you need to do for uh, IFR stuff. So we're going to go ahead and go back, and I'm going to explain a little bit about ILS in terms of setting it up in your flight plan, and we'll get right back to where we are here. Uh, and prepare for our descent. ILS. I haven't heard that name in years. ILS stands for Idiotic Landings That Are Stupid. And it's basically a system that a bunch of nerds came up with to keep people from landing at their airports. Just kidding. Man, am I getting better at these jokes. ILS actually stands for Instrument Landing System, which uses the mystical power of not one, but two radio beams to help you line your aircraft up with the runway in order to land. Now ILS landings are done in combination with IFR flight plans in order to allow pilots to land in low to no visibility flight conditions, aka landing blind, and they do it using these horrifying approach plates. That's horrifying is what that is. Now I'm going to explain ILS landings, but I'm not going to do it here. I think it's going to be easier to do it in the air. But let's roll back to an earlier point, shall we? Has it been later? Oh yes, it has. Well, here we are back to the approach. Now if I just do an automatic approach, it's going to take me direct from Point to Columbia Metro. So the general idea, if it didn't put me on an ILS approach or I didn't set an ILS approach ahead of the time, 
is usually what I've done is just taking a VFR for the rest of the way, which I mean you can do, but it's kind of weird. So what we wanna go ahead and do is set an approach. If we chose uh, ILS 11, it would take us to the other side of the airport. And as you can see, it adds this magenta line, which is going to be our approach into KCAE. Now, I don't care to do that. I'd rather have a more direct approach, so I'm gonna do ILS 29. Now, we can't see yet, but there are little markers that will guide us in from there. Once we get close to the airport, we'll get those. And then when we do this, we don't have to request a vector from ATC to get to our next waypoint when we're on an approach. Because if they sign us an approach, well, they're gonna assign us the one we already have. Now you can change the approach and add the approach uh, inside your aircraft, but I'm not gonna go over that today. I'm just gonna show you how to do it from here and that way you're set up and you can just fly and not have to worry too, too much uh, about setting that up right as you're on your descent and things are starting to get a little hectic. So let's get back to where we left off on the IFR bit and get into our landing. Okay, so I've had to do this like four times because of game crashes and recording issues but now we're actually gonna do a real ILS landing descent and I'm gonna explain it easy and not be overwhelmed and pissed off. Uh, let's go. As you can see, our vertical horizon has changed. We now have the ILS indicators, which will let us know if we're lined up. We'll go ahead and pull up the air traffic control uh, and I have to tune to Jacksonville so they can yell at me some more. Um, and that way you can see. Cessna Alpha Sierra X-ray Golf Sierra 6,000 feet. Cessna Alpha Sierra X-ray Golf Sierra Jacksonville Center continue to coin as planned. Okay, we just got there. And they're probably going to tell me to do something else immediately after. Cessna X-ray Golf Sierra go. 25 miles east. Descend and maintain 2,100 feet. Expect ILS runway 29 or approach via Hopkey transition. Okay, so this little line of information is important. One, we're going to go ahead and descend to 2100, which means we're going to cut speed because uh, we already need to decelerate. And the important one is expect ILS runway 29 via Hopkey transition. Cleared to Hopkey. Okay, so what that means is when we get to Hopkey, that's going to be our approach transition, which we should take that as once we hit that, we're going to throw on our approach button, which is going to be located right next to heading mode. So let's go ahead and descend and we'll get over to that point there. All right, so now we're approaching Hopkey. We are reducing speed as planned. Uh, we're gonna try and bring it to around 200 knots before we go any further. And once we get to Hopkey, I'm probably gonna throw on a notch of flaps as well. Okay, so we are over Hopkey now, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw on approach mode. Throw down a notch of flaps. They want me to go ahead and throw down landing gear as well, which is fine, we are low enough to do so. We're gonna go ahead and speed up as well, make sure we're keeping good speed. And what the approach mode is gonna do is it's going to attempt to find the glide slope. And what that means is the ideal uh, rate of descent uh, for going in and lining up at the airport. So as long as we keep speed where we need to be, uh, we'll go ahead and start dropping altitude soon here. All right, so we should be descending to 1600 feet in just a bit here. Acknowledge approach clearance. We'll go ahead and drop Tower the 1600 one feet. Five Golf okay, so here we are. We found our glide slope at this point, uh, and we are descending. This is all through um, just following our constraints, and then now at this point, it's just approach mode. We're going to go ahead and apply another notch of flaps, slow down pretty rapidly here, and we can get rid of air traffic control, who will continue to yell at me. And we got to keep an eye on our speed because we don't want to go too slow. A lot of this at this point is just keeping an eye on the throttle. Now, if we were in something like the Airbus, it would kind of auto throttle for us and be no big deal, but we're not in an Airbus. So on the artificial horizon, these diamonds are starting to slowly get into place. My plane is yelling at me. We are descending a little too hard. We can get some more speed at this point. That should give us a little bit of altitude. Again, this is all throttle management. Our descent is too hard. We can see from those right there. All right, now we're at a good rate of descent. Oh, this is a little too low at this point. And I'm gonna go ahead and take over since we're already pretty much here. Going too high. Descend a little rapidly. Thought my landing gear was down, but evidently not. So we're gonna have to wait for that. That's a great meme. Please be down. Okay, it's down. And we're gonna cut speed and flare and flare and flare. And wheels touch down. And perfect, here we are. Right on the runway. And 
as you can see, I took over when things were pretty much under control and in hand. I mean, I was gliding a little lower than I wanted to, and so I went to recover it, and it kind of messed things up a little bit. But that's how an ILS landing works, is you just get in line, and then you have the information at your disposal uh, that in zero visibility, you know that you can land, so you can look up and take over manually. Uh, and this is to ensure you have the confidence, and it makes it nice for night landings and stuff like that when you might not be able to see the airport or get perfectly in line. So, we're going to go ahead and turn off the runway here, and park, and we'll go over what we just did once more. So let's kind of look at our VFR map here, just to get an idea of what just happened and how we did it. So we took off uh, from KFlow way over here, hit the D cell, we started slowing down, and started descending at Coint. From Coint, we went to Hopkey, which was our transition. And as long as you set your IFR flight plan to have the proper ILS uh, approach, then it will go ahead and tell you what that transition mark is. Once you hit that transition mark, you're going to throw on the approach mode. Approach mode is going to handle your, gli your glide slope once you start getting closer to the airport, and that's going to be how you come into the airport. Now what you need to do from there is essentially just manage your speed up until you get closer to the airport, and of course make sure your landing gear is down, which I didn't, but that's okay because I make mistakes and I'm an imperfect person. Anyhow, once you get into a close range of the airport you're looking at, then you can take over and do it in a combination of your eyes and instruments at that point. But the whole descent and approach is going to be pretty much all through instruments, and this helps you flying through fog or nighttime or stormy conditions, anything of that nature. Now, there is additional information that is important to know, which you can reference on the charts, but for starting out for ILS landings, this is a great first step and just a good place to build off of. Of course, in real life, it takes a lot of time for people to learn this stuff. You have to get certified and go to classes, but you're coming to me, so this is what I have to offer you, and I hope it works out. Well, there you have it, gamer girls and gamer boys. I conquered that which I feared most, ILS landings. And we talked about IFR, which is, I guess, kind of neat. Now, if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful in any way, feel free to let me know by liking and subscribing. And if there's anything else you'd like to see or for me to cover, let me know down in the comments. Now, if you want to see me cross the United States in the slowest way possible in Microsoft Flight Sim, feel free to stop by my Twitch at twitch.tv slash bevo devo. Anyways, thanks for watching.